What's up there SEO pros, welcome back. My name is Chase Reiner, and today we're gonna to be talking about going from the beginner uh, mindset in SEO to a more advanced mindset and how to actually learn and become good at SEO in 2019. So if you're brand new to this channel, you have no idea who I am or what I talk about. Mainly I talk about on-page SEO, white hat SEO, anything that revolves around building assets and ranking your website on Google based on data rather than conceptual or theoretical strategies. So if you want to get notified and join the live streams that I do, which most of these videos I do are live streams and you want to ask questions while I'm live, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you get notified uh, and you can join. Other than that, make sure you also head over to the Facebook group over here. It's called the White Hat SEO Network. I'll leave a link to it in the description and you can go ahead and ask questions and interact with other SEOs like yourself. Cool. So today we're going to start with talking about what you need to know if you're a complete beginner, if you have no idea what you're doing and you uh, really just need to get started and start making some money uh, doing SEO or ranking a website. And then we're going to talk about um, some more advanced strategies and what you need to do in order to uh, start auditing big websites with like 50,000, 100,000, 1 million pages indexed, uh, where you need to learn SEO from if you're going to try to move forward from the beginner mindset to the advanced SEO mindset. And uh, yeah, by the way, this course, uh, or sorry, this video is linked to a course. Um, the course is a way, way more detailed outline. Uh, it's a ridiculous amount of videos. I forget how many it is, but um, if you head over to my website, you can get more information about it over here. This course is actually linked to a huge uh, bundle of courses, which uh, all together is about 55 hours of SEO videos I've put together over the last like year and a half. So a ton of great stuff in there. If you want to check that out as well, uh, the link will be in the description. So let's just start out with uh, the conceptual strategies you need to master when it comes to SEO. So the first thing that you need to know about is uh, user experience and user intent. Now I talk a lot about a lot, I talk about this a lot in most of my videos, but it's something that you really need to um, understand before you go into anything. Um, and I actually just talked about this in my last video. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a, a triangle that I've created. It's called triforcing, SEO triforcing. Uh, and what we have here is we have user intent, user experience. Let me just abbreviate that user experience. And we have, this looks like it says sucks user experience, and then authority. Now, you need to be able to focus on all three of these to bring in a really sustainable SEO strategy. If you don't know what I'm talking about here and you want a really uh, good detailed answer, I'll leave another link as well to a video I just did yesterday talking in more detail about what this means. But ideally, you wanna match what people are looking for based on what they're intending to find with the best experience possible for that intent. And at the same time, presenting it into the, to them in a way that you have enough authority to be able to rank for that topic. So once you've grasped that uh, sort of concept, what you need to know is uh, really just on page basics to start out with. That's where I recommend most people start. Um, a couple uh, things that you need to know about on page is that you can really easily break down your uh, uh, on page skills by going to Sitebulb, which is a, an app for Windows and desktop, uh, Windows and Mac, I also, I believe. And uh, what you could do is you can go into a site. Let's just say I go to chaserunner.com and I do a scan. Start new project, Chase Runner. Chase Runner. And save and continue. Uh, 
Okay, so here you'll see the audit that you need to run. Um, basically, you can connect this to Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and some other stuff, but for the moment, um, we're just gonna let it run like this because you don't need all this stuff, but it is sometimes helpful to do. Uh, and then you're just gonna press Start Audit. Now, I've already done this on my own website, so I'm gonna go into it. And I'll click into this. Now, any page that I wanna rank higher on Google, I can look at it from an individual level. So if I go to, let's say my homepage, chasewriner.com, and I go look at that page, it, this tool is gonna show me a bunch of stuff that's going on with this, the page and give me hints to make it rank higher. Now, you can see here, it doesn't actually have any hints. Oh, actually, here it does. Hints right here. Uh, for some reason, I, I thought it didn't because there was no, there's usually a notification at the top. Um, so if you click on hints, you can see all the different things that needs to be fixed. So head contains a no script tag. URLs where the head contains a no script tag. You need to be very careful. Um, has images, missing alt text, boom, 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 right? So I can just do this on an individual uh, level. Um, I can also look at other parts of the content. So I can go to on page. It'll show me the meta description. It'll show me the title tag. And by the way, if you don't know what this stuff is, a meta description and a title tag is basically what you're going to be seeing um, on Google. So you can specify in your actual web page um, what you want to show to Google uh, with a title tag and a meta description. And the way you edit that is with a tool called Yoast. Or depending on what you're using, you might not be using WordPress, but um, if you're using WordPress, you would get a tool like Yoast or any other tool uh, that lets you change your uh, heading and meta description. Let me just log in. Okay, sorry about this. Um, and you can download it just by going to plugins, add new. You click on this, Yoast, go get it, install. And then um, when you go into your page, once it's set up, it should let you be able to just go ahead and uh, change your title and meta description. So edit page. And scroll down and there it is. Now this is really important because if um, somebody's looking for something that you're offering, you wanna make sure you obviously have it in your title and your meta description. You also really wanna make sure that you are um, using qualifiers in these different sections as well. Um, to bring higher clicks in based on um, who, what people are looking for. So um, the way I do that is with something a little bit more complicated called uh, benchmarking, SEO benchmarking. And I actually had somebody make me a tool. I paid a lot of money for this so that I can pull averages off of Google and actually see what people are mentioning the most and then include that in my titles and in my meta descriptions and in my content. But we'll talk about that more later. So... Um, Going back to Sitebulb, uh, we can go into other things like duplicate content, incoming links, and, and this stuff's really good to look at because all of these different sections are somewhat of ranking factors. So the amount of outgoing links you have, the amount of incoming links. But the way I base all of this, besides the technical knowledge or the you know on-page just uh, things that you're gonna need to know, is based off of um, really just the average. So again, the way I pull the average is with this tool. And what I'll do is I'll go and I'll look at what the average word count is for a given keyword. So let's say I want to go for SEO, uh, beginner to advanced SEO tutorial. You can see the average word count of my page is 1000 words. Um, the average top 10 ranking uh, pages on Google are 7,344 words. Uh, images are average 21, so on and so on. And then the word frequency, it, I will actually look at this based on a 1.3x multiplier because I usually want to over-optimize just a tiny bit um, and add a little bit more content above what the average is. So I'd probably go for like 9,000 words. Um, so let's get into some stuff that you probably don't know. So a lot of you who take this course or who... Um, are watching this video probably already know what a title tag and a meta description and that kind of stuff is. Again, if you don't, please go over to the link in the description and check out the video where I talk, the last video I did where I talk about uh, 
you know, sort of the top of the funnel, more beginner type mindset. It's called the organic SEO tutorial. Um, and then come back to this video and uh, start watching uh, from this point. Because again, a lot of the beginner stuff that I'm going to be talking about here, I talked about that video and a lot, a lot of the stuff that um, you're going to need to know is really just a, based around creating really good content. So you're going to hear a lot of the strategies for becoming a really good beginner SEO, which is uh, you know, making sure that your content is long form, making sure that uh, you're answering all the questions you need to be answering in your content, um, you know, using related keywords in your content, uh, don't keyword stuff. So that's what a lot of the stuff is going to be for beginner type SEO tutorials. And for the most part, if you're watching this video and you're on this channel, chances are you probably already know a little bit about SEO uh, more than most beginners. And again, if you, um, watch the other tutorial and you really want to learn the basics, the vi the course that I actually do, I actually go through um, talking about, uh, let me show you uh, how to look at a page from an HTML level. I can show you just a preview here. And you can see this is right from different sources part one. and uh, lets you do some other cool stuff as well. Uh, and then underneath that, we got our Facebook pixel. So in this, I actually analyze the page and show you um, all the different things you need to know in terms of the HTML, uh, UX, that kind of stuff. And also this video is available on the beginner to advanced landing page um, where you can actually watch the first, uh, it looks like 48 minutes of this for free. So if you are really new and both these videos don't help you, go check that out. You can watch um, more of like just like basic HTML type stuff um, that's going to take your uh, beginner mindset to a little bit more advanced. Okay, so um, for the more advanced type stuff, uh, again, all the stuff that I do is based off data, like I said, and everything that I recommend people is generally uh, two things. It's either one, set a solid foundation right here. So set foundation for website, or it is uh, improve uh, improve current, uh, improve current overall strategy, which sounds pretty general, but, uh, the thing is, is that most people don't have their foundation set up. Right. And what I mean by this is that if you look, if you do an audit on most people's sites, I'll show you an audit that I just recently did, uh, for a web design company. It was like yesterday. Let me just go here. Type in loud egg, I believe it was. There it is. So I ran through um, this roadmap, which by the way, if you if you sign up for the course, um, you will get this roadmap it'll, and it'll help you uh, run through different websites you're gonna be auditing. Um, this right here is the foundational audit. And, and what this does is it just sees if there's anything going on with the website that may be a problem. Now, um, again, in this roadmap, you're gonna be able to click on different sections and then see whether or not these different things are either a problem or not and whether or not you need to fix them. But for the most part, all you're gonna be doing is just going through Site Redirects Preferred Version. You're just gonna go click on the website, see if it redirects like this. If it doesn't redirect when you do this, then there's a problem. Um, and so, what you do is if it's good, then you press an X. If it's bad, you press a Z. And at the end of the day, once you're done, you filter from Z to X and then you fix all the things that are um, red. Now, the cool thing is when you actually fix it, you can put a green right there or an X and then you can see all the things that you fix and then you can present that to the client or to whoever you're doing the audit for or for your own sites. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of Z's here. If I filter this, let me just duplicate this so I don't lose where I'm at. If I duplicate this and then filter from Z to A, you can see here's all the things that um, they need to fix before they start doing uh, any sort of content type strategy um, or you know overall strategy improvement. So um, you can see here robots.txt needs to be fixed, terms of service and privacy policy need to be added, keyword mapping needs to be done, um, uh, conversion pages need to be added, uh, so that they can track conversions, so on and so on. And then in the actual priority list, I make recommendations uh, telling them all the things they need to do. But the thing is, 
with this section, this isn't going to completely cut it because as an SEO, you need to sort of be a detective. So um, depending on what type of site you're going to be working with, there can be a completely different set of problems than another site. And you really want to be optimizing again uh, for not only the user, but for also uh, increasing the overall amount of money that the site you're working with is making. Now, how do you do that? The way you do that is with the system I've created called benchmarking. So uh, if we go into a benchmark, you can see here's all of the different metrics that you're going to want to know about when it comes to ranking a site higher. So literally anything that isn't a technical aspect that is going to have to do with on page and a little bit of off page is going to be included in this benchmarking sheet. And I'm going to show you how, uh, but, but really, like, I don't know if there's really anything else that I could put in here that will not like, lead to a ranking signal. Um, so let me explain how this works. So let's just say you go through and you fix a lot of the technical stuff um, based on your scan with Sitebulb and then probably a tool called Screaming Frog, which I would recommend you check out a tutorial on my channel. Uh, if you type in Chase Renner Screaming Frog, you will find the tutorial for it. Go watch that, see how I do the export into this uh, template and actually get all the conditional formatting set up so that we can get all these resi greens that I'm about to show you. But overall, uh, a lot of the stuff that you're not gonna see in this main part of the audit, it's all gonna be through benchmarking and you're gonna get a significant amount more data from doing that and actually be able to rank an entire site and pages higher just from doing this data, uh, getting this data. So again, I've spent years creating this system where I've uh, literally bought my own software to do this. Um, I've used uh, different metrics from different sources like Ahrefs, uh, Screaming Frog, uh, Search Console Analytics, and I've combined them all into one place, uh, as well as social signal checkers, so that I can literally see on a page by page basis, what do I need to do? And then what sort of reoccurring themes are going on with these pages that are probably gonna apply to other pages. So if we go into, uh, again, benchmarks, uh, what I can do is I can take any URL. Let's just say I usually start with the top traffic URLs. And the way I pull those is I go into Screaming Frog. I connect Search Console and Analytics to a given website. If you don't have that stuff, I go through all how to set all that stuff up in the course. Um, we'll go to API Access, Google Analytics, connect the website. We'll just do this one. There's my website, Chase Renner. Now when I uh, type in my website and I also connect Google Search Console, this is going to give me the analytics and Search Console uh, user data uh, that I'm gonna need in order to be able to optimize this page correctly. So we'll do another one. Uh, I think I signed in the wrong account, but uh, either way, you're gonna press start. API is gonna say 100%, it's gonna pull all the data. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically export that data, copy and paste it into your screaming frog portion of your template. And then you're gonna get a bunch of really cool uh, reds and greens, which actually this part's messed up. Uh, we had to redo this template, this is the wrong one. But um, all of this will show you in reds or greens if there's anything above or below a certain average. Now, if you go to benchmarks, you can actually copy and paste that into the URL address over here. And then what you're gonna have is you're gonna have all of your URLs uh, filtered by clicks, which all you do for that is just go to clicks, filter right here. And now you're gonna have all of everything sorted by clicks, um, which URLs are bringing in the most traffic. And you could start grabbing these URLs and plugging them into Search Console. So go to Search Console here, start now, open report. Or sorry, I was supposed to go to Laude. Go to here. Page, plug it in. All right, so now we can actually see what keywords bringing in the most impressions, um, which is this one, how to make a business card in Photoshop, ranking 9.6 on Google, and it only has one click. So I'm gonna copy that in to here and then I'm gonna copy all of the user data. And what I just did is I took all of the user data 
here. And I now know what I need to optimize based on where this uh, uh, URL is ranking, uh, sorry, the keywords ranking for. So you can see the average click through rate for this keyword is 0.20%. That's really low. Average position is 9.6. So it knows, I know we need to do more stuff to it. And then I can start pulling other things like the page rating or UR um, rating from hrefs. Uh, sorry, I'm supposed to say UR. Uh, and then I can pull the external links, external links, the social signals, and the incoming internal links. Again, if you don't know how to do this stuff, go check out that other tutorial, the organic SEO tutorial. You'll see how to do it. Um, and then what I could do is I can just scroll through this and then see all the stuff that I need to fix based on reds and greens. If you know my description is too low, too high, so on and so on. And then if anything's going on in terms of the Google Analytics type stuff, like if the conversion rates are too low, if the bounce rates are too high, and then moving over even more, this is where I can pull the averages in terms of the word counts, image counts, video counts, and all this stuff that we're gonna pull from Bench Market Marketer. Um, so that's the more advanced type stuff that I do in terms of the schema markup and, and uh, uh, you know, OG data manipulation, all the stuff that you're going to want to do for, um, you know, like organization markup, local business markup, um, setting up your plugins like WPSSO for social data, um, you know, optimizing your Yoast plugin, all that stuff. All of that is in the landing page. Again, I'll leave in the link in the description. Uh, or you can just Google beginner to advanced SEO and you will find the tutorial uh, right here at the top and you can go ahead and check it out. But that's just a quick run through uh, for some tips for 2019. Hopefully you guys got some value from that and until I see you all next time, happy SEOing.